Hey everybody, this is James Tierney again with tierneyeducation.com. Got a question from a student about finding the indirect utility function and the expenditure function when they were given a Cobb Douglas utility function. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe and like this page because I'll continue over the summer to post a bunch of economics tutorial videos like this one. Let's go ahead and get started. The utility function that my student was asking about to get this indirect utility and the expenditure function was a basic Cobb Douglas. So the one he was asking was the utility of xy equal to x to the one half y to the one half. So we're gonna do that one, but then I also want to change up these exponents just to show you how the steps are still the same. The first thing I want to comment on is this right here is my direct utility function. So the direct utility function is when you are finding the level of utility given the number of x and y that you are consuming. So that's what the direct utility function is. The indirect utility function is going to be, uh, we use v instead of u. It's still a measurement of utility. But what, you're, what the unknowns are going to be, it's going to be a function of the income m, the price of x, and the price of y. So what the indirect utility function is really telling us is if I know a level of income and the price of x and the price of y, the maximum utility I can get is going to be v, right? So if we assume that we're going to maximize our overall utility, using our optimal rule. And if you need a review on finding that optimal utility using uh, the optimal rule, uh, go ahead and I'll make sure I put a video up here. It'll pop up somewhere up here in the top right-hand corner. So that's the difference between the direct utility function and the indirect utility function. So the question that I always talk to my students about or the question they have and what I tell them is how do we find the indirect utility function? Well, it's a pretty quick two-step process. First, you're going to take your demand functions, meaning my x star, which we know is a function of m, p of x, p of y. Now, technically, someone might say, wait a minute, for Cobb-Douglas, it's not a function of p of y. Sure, but just theoretically in general, you have your demand for x. And then we have my demand for y, which is mpx comma py. So you're gonna take those, and then your second step is you're going to plug those into the direct utility function. Now this video is not going to solve for the demand function because I already did that in the video for Cobb Douglas. Again, you can go ahead and watch that video up here as well. So I'm just going to state them that hopefully we remember if you've watched that other video x star for Cobb Douglas is always going to be alpha over alpha plus beta multiplied by m over px. So in our case, because my alpha is one half and my beta is one half, this is going to be one half over one. We're going to get one half times m over px. And my y star, again, we already did this in the former video, you can pause and go back to that one, is beta over alpha plus beta times m over py. And again, since beta, which is my exponent on y, is one half, alpha is one half, when I add them up, it's gonna be one, it's going to be one half over one times m over py. We're going to rewrite this as one half times m over py. So we have these demand functions and we're just going to plug it into my direct utility function. Now that we do this, we just name it V for my indirect utility function. So X is M over two PX raised to the one half and Y is M over two PY raised to the one half. So all I'm doing there is I'm taking this, right? So if it's one half times M over PX, that's just m over 2px, and I'm substituting it in, I'm plugging it in for this x. So it's that whole thing raised to the 1 half. I do the same thing with y, that's raised to the 1 half. And now I need to do a little bit of algebra. 
So the numerator, you have m to the 1 half times m to the 1 half. Remember, our exponent rules, we have to add the exponents if we are multiplying them. So that's going to be just m to the 1, which is just m in my numerator. In the denominator, I have 2px to the 1 half. I have 2py to the 1 half. Well, that's going to get me 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 1 half. That's just going to get me 2. And then I have a px to the 1 half and a y to the 1 half. I'm going to write this as the square root of px times py. So just a few small algebra things there for those of you who might not be uh, up to date completely on your algebra. px to the 1 half. 1 half is the same thing as a square root. And if I were to have both things under the square root, I can just combine them. So px, py. So this was technically 2 times 2, which is 4, square root of 4, but that's just going to be 2. And there, right here, is my indirect utility function. Not too bad, not too bad. Again, the steps are just taking your demand function and you're plugging it in. Now this becomes slightly easier just because we have, you know, just the one half, our basic Cobb-Douglas, but we'll do another example in another video where it has a different exponents. The last part of this video, the student asked about doing the expenditure function. The expenditure function is uh, actually quite easy once you get to the indirect utility function. I'm going to scroll up just so we have a little more room, so you'll, you'll lose the title, but that's okay. The expenditure function, so EF for expenditure function, is going to be M as a function of your utility, P of X and P of Y. So all you're doing to find the uh, expenditure function once you have your indirect utility function is you solve indirect utility function for M. So I'm just going to multiply both sides of my indirect utility function by 2 square roots PX PY. So what is this going to get me? This is going to say M is equal to 2 V square roots px times py. And that is your expenditure function, and we have my indirect utility function. So this one is my expenditure function. So there you have it, folks. Make this a little smaller so we can see it all on one screen. We'll review it. All right, we want to find indirect utility function, expenditure function for Cobb-Douglas. The question my student sent me had the exponents on x and y as 1 half, 1 half. We take the demand function, plug it into the direct utility function to get that indirect utility function. It's just two steps. Numbers are pretty easy here because of the 1 halves. Right? These might be slightly different, so it might change this up. Uh, this right here, as a reminder, is the demand for x and y always, always, always with Cobb-Douglas. We did that in a different video. Again, you can find that. I posted it earlier in this video. Go back and watch and find that link. Then we just plug those two into the direct utility function solve. That's going to get us our indirect utility function. Expenditure functions, real quick after that, we're just solving indirect for my overall M, my income. And that's going to be my expenditure function. Why does this matter? Well, we're going to use this information here really the expenditure function mostly, to talk about compensated budget constraints, overall compensated variation. We'll then use it to do substitution income effect. And I'll make sure I get some of those videos up as well. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like. Send this to anyone you know who loves or hates economics.